everyone, it's Amanda. Um, I'm going to make soap for the very, very first time today. Uh, if you haven't been following along with us, um, my YouTube channel is My Life My Way if you'd like to follow along. Um, and we've been tracking my infertility journey since just before we started um, actually taking treatments. Uh, and it's been like a three year process now. And a little while back, they told us we were gonna have to do IVF and that is super costly. We actually did try in October um, and early November and unfortunately it didn't work so now we have to try a second round. So welcome to my fundraiser to try and um, pay for a second round of IVF. So we started up a little fundraiser called Bath Bombs for Babies. You can find us both on Instagram and on Facebook with that exact tag. And today I'm going to try making soap. This is my very very first time ever making any kind of soap. Um, I've never picked up like a little craft kit. I've never nothing. But I've been watching a lot of people online like Katie Carson from Royalty Soaps and Kaylee from uh, Soy and Shea and they've kind of given me up some confidence to think that maybe I can do this. My husband's been amazingly supportive. He thinks I can do it. He's a lot more confident than I am at this point. But here's what I'm gonna make today. I'm gonna make a rose soap. So we're gonna start with some basic stuff. I have some just basic goat's milk, melt and pour, um, soap base. Starting next week, I'm actually gonna try making soap from actual scratch. So like all the way down to oils and lye water and mixing them together to make actual soap from all the way at the base um, to make sure that I know everything that's going into the soap. But this week I figured I'd start easy. You can use melt and pour and like, like crafts with your kids. So hopefully I don't screw this up too bad. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure how confident I feel about this, but I'm getting there. Um, and then I'm going to color it up a little bit because just because it's an all, like a more all natural soap doesn't mean it has to be boring. So I got this like kind of pink clay stuff. I got it from Windy Point out of Calgary. Uh, so they're also Canadian, which means I don't pay for customs and I pay way less for shipping to order from them. So that's awesome. Um, and then I have some rose water or rose essential oil. It's a rose absolute. It's 5% um, to put into the soap to give it a nice kind of rose scent to it that'll be hopefully relatively subtle. And then I have some rose petals that I actually bought just from Michael's, which is a local craft store to me. Um, but you can buy rose petals and rose buds and all that kind of stuff from all over the internet. There's quite a few places that carry them. So we're going to see how this goes. All right, I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, everyone. So we are in my kitchen and I have some nice melt and pour that's melted down or was melted down until I stopped touching it for a second. Let's stir that back in there. All right. So really quickly while it's still melted, let's add a little color to it. A tablespoon. Some of this pink clay in there. Well, that looks really nice actually. Look at that. All right. So far, the soap is melted, and I have colorant in, and nobody died. So that's like a good start to my day. <laughs> Just trying to whisk this colorant in here. May or may not actually go. Let's do this, come on. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you guys enjoy these soapy making videos. Um, a lot of soapers that I watch, um, some of them talk through it, some of them just do like a little bit of music overlay and you just kind of watch and make it. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys would prefer to watch for me if you would just prefer like just to kind of watch these videos getting made and just watch the soap getting made and just like an intro to tell you what I'm putting in it so you kind of have an idea of what's going on or do you prefer that I talk through it? Um, and we can have different kinds of conversations and all that kind of fun stuff. So it kind of depends on what you guys want to see. I think that's as good as that's going to get by hand. I have a brand new stand mixer because I've actually never used one of these. So let's see how this works. Let's see if this is going to work. First up. This thickened up way more than I thought it was. So I'm gonna heat this back up again. And then we'll add a little bit of the flavoring or the, uh, you know what I mean, the scent. All right, I'll be back. 
Okay, so planning of just like rewarming it in the microwave is not going well for me. So I looked up a different way to do this in the book that I should have been reading from in the first place. And it said to use a double boiler. So that's what I have going. I have this pot that's right here on top of a bigger, or um, sorry, a big bowl on top of a pot and the pot is boiling and it's finally actually starting to melt a little bit. So I'm going to wait till this like chunk because it literally became like just a solid block of soap again. Um, I'm going to wait till this melts and then I'll put on my gloves and we'll start working on the rest of this stuff. All right. Okay, so now that we have this like way nicer, smooth consistency here, I'm going to put in our fragrance oil, which is a nice kind of uh, rose essential oil. And it really does smell like roses. It's really nice, actually. It's nice and gentle. It's not like a super overpowering scent. We'll see how this goes. All right, there we go. All right, so in true my style kind of a fashion, the moment it looks like I might be doing something in the right direction and the camera battery died. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit of rubbing alcohol on here. It's been sitting for just a minute since I poured it out. So it's kind of got a bit of a skin to it if you're looking at something that's a little bit shiny in there. I'm gonna have these little rose petals. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use them yet. Apparently I have to break a couple of them apart. Just kind of going to break the skin on it just a little bit. Kind of get them in there. Ooh, these are really packed together, aren't they? All right. Okay. So, there we go. Um, so for when it comes to like soap designs and stuff, I've seen a lot of soap makers, because I've been watching a lot of videos lately, um, where they have like their soap designs kind of drawn onto pictures. And I've actually been doing that myself. I took some um, paper and some pencil crayons and stuff with us on our trip to Europe when we were doing our first round of IVF. And, oh, look at this. There's a whole little rosebud in there. Let's take this way, the one in the end. Um, anyway, so I took some pencil crayons and some paper with me and I was just kind of messing around. It was just something to kind of kill a little time and take my mind off of everything we were doing and kind of give myself like, you know, a little healthy sort of something to do with some of my stress anyways. So that's what we kind of did a little bit. Um, and as I was doing that, I made quite a few designs. I've made a few designs since. I kind of sit down every time I feel like I want to be a little artistic and kind of get in on it. Um, my question for you guys is would you like to see the design that I'm working with or that I'm kind of trying to go off of before or even after I make the soap just to kind of show you what my thought process is and whether or not it turns out like this soap where, you know, my thought process didn't quite go well, but it's looking about the same as what I kind of wanted. So that might not be so bad. <laughs> anyway, so these little rose soaps are going to be available. The mountain pour soaps actually really quick. So it's done um, and ready to cut usually within a couple of hours. So we're going to come back in about, I don't know, four hours or so and cut it up. And then as soon as I get this video up and up to you guys, it'll be ready and on sale for you. All right, we'll come back in a few. All right, so I've waited four hours and this is what the soap looks like. Oh, as soon as it'll focus. Come on you, how come it's not focusing? There we go. So it's nice, it's smooth, it's clean. There's no sparkles or anything on it, just that nice kind of rose petal look. And there's this beautiful kind of peachy pink color underneath it. Um, I think it looks more brown on the camera to me right now, maybe more tannish. But it definitely looks kind of like a peachy pink color from here. So I've peeled off these two just to make sure that we could actually get it open. I just have to peel off the other two sides. And I've never tried to get a mold out of here. So this is going to be fun, kind of its own little bit of excitement for a second. But they were kind of saying if you like kind of pop the back of it. 
<laughs> Maybe? This might be fun. We may end up just like trying to rush this through in a video or may have to cut this part out altogether. I'm not really sure how this is gonna work. Get out of my mold. <laughs> how come there's no instructional tutorial on how to take these things out? All right, hold on, we're gonna turn it upside down. I've seen this done too, where people like kinda gently push down from the back. Oh, there we go. Broken some of that seal anyways. That's all I'm trying to do is lift the silicone and break the seal on it. Ooh, all right, hold on. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is way more complicated. No wonder nobody videos this stuff. <laughs> oh, some of my roses fell off. That's kind of sad, but that's okay. Tentacles always fall off at least a little bit during cutting and unmolding and all that kind of stuff. Whoa, oh, she's coming out. It's coming out. Whoa. Sorry, that totally wasn't on camera, but there we go. I got it, I got it. Ta-da. All right, there we go. Move this off the side a little bit. All right, I'm actually really, really happy with that. Um, looks pretty good. It does have some like super rough edges around it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, um, but that's okay. Cause I can clean those up really, really easily. And then I do have this cutter. I just ordered off of Amazon. I'm super excited about it. Um, and it's super simple to operate. So all you do is kind of like put your loaf in once you've, or your slab or whatever you want to call this. I think it's called a loaf is the technical term. You figure out how thick you want it. And then you just adjust this little piece right here. And then you take your blade and just whoa, cut down, smoosh. All right, let's see how that goes. So there we go. So there's the inside. Whoa, hold on, if I can figure out where I'm going with my camera right here. And a little bit of that top. There's that individual rosebud that I found in this little package, which was kind of cool. And then we'll clean up these edges and you'll get a nice little cute bar of soap. Pretty cool. All right, hold on for a sec. Okay. So all I did was just double check that this one that I've already cut is actually the four ounce bar I was looking for and it's perfect. It's like 4.02 or something ounces. So that's awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and cut another piece. Oh, oh that stuck right to me. All right, there we go. So again, little bits of roses on top and this beautiful kind of rose color in there. Really hope the camera's kind of picking up how pink that is and not just like the yellow because of the lighting, lighting that I'm standing in in my kitchen. It's getting too late at night for there to actually be any natural light coming in the window. So we're dealing with the, uh, the sort of yellowy light that comes out of just the artificial stuff that's in my kitchen today. Ooh. So there we go. Some more botanicals on the top. And this right here. All right, and just in case this camera's not picking it up very closely, um, in a second here, once I cut off another piece or two, I'll get down and give you guys like an actual close up. Make sure that you get a good look at it. Oh, come on, give me that. <laughs> and there we go. So that's it. Nice and super easy. So, well, super easy as in as soon as I figured out how to work a double boiler. Let's let's be serious here. That whole melting in the microwave thing was a bit of a mess. <laughs> so, for those of you guys that are gonna try to do this, just kind of a heads up. But yeah, it's a beautiful color. So, anyways, um, I'm gonna finish cutting the rest of these up and I'll bring you guys down for a close up. Okay, so we're back and I've got you guys in for a bit of a close up so you can kind of see what all the soaps look like. Look at how awesome that is. For as much as we were having problems earlier, they actually turned out pretty nice. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching my um, first attempt at making soap and the disaster that it turned out to be. But you know what? I'm still really happy with it. It turned out really nice at the end. Nobody died. I didn't get any on the dog. I did get some on me and some on the floor. 
But as my loving husband pointed out, it's soap. It'll wash out, obviously. <laughs> It also caused a massive amount of chaos in my kitchen. It took like three rounds of dishes to get all of that stuff taken care of. But you know what? They actually turned out really nice. I'm actually really happy with them. They smell very, very softly. It's a very subtle scent of rose. So if you're not like a huge um, floral kind of fan, it's not gonna be overpowering. It's definitely like not gonna scent up your whole bathroom just because it's scented just a little bit with that rose oil. Um, but it is kind of like this nice pretty pink color and the rose petals on top are kind of cool. Um, and I'm actually really happy with how the first attempt turned out. So let me know um, what you think of the soap. I am gonna put it up for sale this Friday uh, on our Facebook page, which is Bath Bombs for Babies. Um, and again, if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's Bath Bombs for Babies there as well. And if you want to follow my personal journey along on Instagram, I'm getting underscore pregnant, P-R-A-G-U-E-N-A-N-T. Um, and yeah, and then follow me along some more on this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Um, I've got an amazing, overwhelming amount of support for our infertility journey, for this like wild experiment I'm having with soap. Um, people buying bath bombs or sharing posts about bath bombs, that kind of stuff. Um, we do ship internationally, so it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, and I can put soap in with an order of bath bombs, not a problem. So let me know if you'd like to purchase anything, but if you could share this video with other people that may want to um, purchase them, that'd be awesome. I really appreciate all the support because um, we're hoping to get back to another round of IVF this fall. Um, but it's a lot of money. IVF. Uh, here in the city is about 15,000. If we go to Prague, it's a little over five and a half thousand. So, which is why we're going to Prague to go for IVF, because even the entire vacation didn't cost about as much as us just doing it here did. So, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you following me. And I will talk to you guys later. Okay, bye.